Eisenhower got sold out, I think that he realized that all of a sudden this 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 matter is is going into uh, into the control of corporations. He uh, realized that he was losing control. He realized that this this the phenomenon of of uh, of whatever it was that uh, that we were faced with uh, was not going to be in the best hands, and that that those were the as far as I can remember that was the expression that was used. It's not going to be in the best hands. And so it has turned out to be. One day, uh, Sergeant uh, Allen and uh, and uh, uh, the other the other sergeant, and I, I'll remember his name soon, Sergeant Atkins. They were, and Sergeant uh, Montalegra, and, and uh, they they came to us and said, "Look, you know, we got." We got a situation where we we have one, an aircraft crash that's possibly friendly, and they need us to go and, and secure the crash site. And uh, well, we found the area really easy because there was a there was a huge gash in the land where where something had crashed. Everything was burned, and it was like like if you had almost cut like a, a warm butter with a knife. I mean, it was just it's like it's it's like something on fire. Or had enter or some kind of energy like a laser almost had had like gutted. I mean, it was really strange. And and basically, we were the first ones to see the object. And basically, what happened is we didn't go straight up the hill because basically this thing went up the hill and then off into the side of of of, of the ravine or the ridge. This is about a 200 foot ridge at least. It was buried in, in in the side of the cliff. But anyway, we didn't go straight up. We went to the to the to on to the left. And walked up to the top of the ridge, and that's when we saw the craft. Basically, uh, this is a huge ship, and 10 meters in width and about 20 meters in length. I'm just not sure. That's just an estimate from what I remember. But it was huge. I mean, it was big, man. And it was shaped like almost like between an egg and like a teardrop, almost. And when I first saw it, you know, I was scared. It scared the you know the heck out of me. You know, I didn't know what to do and. It was dripping this syrup like uh, like syrup viscosity, this liquid. Uh, it was everywhere, all down, everywhere when we went down there because there were plants and everything. And it was it was weird. It was a, a, a purplish green color, and it kind of like like fluctuated. Like you couldn't really when you you'd look at it one time, then you look at it again, and it would like it's almost like it. I don't know if it was like alive and it was just changing. But every time you looked at it, you saw a different shade of, of greenish purple. It was strange. There was a, there was one light on it that slowly went around, and, it, and and the machine I could hear it. I could hear. I guess because it was still functioning, and it had like a like a, a hum to it, like like a really bass. Like say if you unplugged an amp from a guitar, that kind of mm, you know it was really really you know it was really deep, and it kind of fluctuated, and then finally it just cut off. And everything just seemed to stop. Uh, when I was looking at the craft, it was buried, so I could see the back of it, and there were these large vents. Well, that, uh, they look like vents, sort of like a fish gill on the back. I couldn't see around the other side, and I guess I'm assuming that it was the same way on the other side. That looked like I don't know that, that they could that could have been used for propulsion. I'm not sure. You know, in Stinger School, they teach you about all different kinds of aircraft and stuff like that. And I knew I knew a lot of aircraft anyway because I I like I like reading about aircraft and data and that stuff. And uh, well, essentially, when I saw it, I'm like, man, this is not this is nothing that I knew of. When I saw the the aircraft, it had been hit by something something that had that had took it out. This is what I think happened: is we shot it down, the Peruvian shot it down. The other guys knew it was flying. I knew that these these aircraft were flying because I had been in the command center there at the radar installation and 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 I heard a couple women there in the Air Force talking about aircraft uh, flying in and out of the atmosphere at Mach 10 plus. And that was happening. All oh, this this happened all the time. There was like three or four incidents where I was duty there that the same uh, the same Air Force officer came in there to get books. The reason, I, I guess the reason they were taking them is they didn't want people to know that they're tracking these aircraft. 
I guess. I, I mean, again, this, I'm just assuming that. They had a big black curtain that divided the hangar into two, two different areas, and that behind these curtains was another big area, and inside this area they had, um, you know, all the lights turned off, and they go in, they turn the lights on, and here are three flying saucers floating off the floor, no cables suspended from the ceiling holding them up, no landing gear underneath, just floating, hovering above the floor. And they had little exhibits, they had a TV, a little uh, videotape running showing the smallest of the three vehicles sitting out in the desert, presumably uh, over a dry lake bed at some place like Area 51. And it, uh, it showed this vehicle making um, three little quick hopping motions like that and then accelerating straight up and out of sight until you couldn't see it and completely disappearing from view in just a couple of seconds. I mean, just boom, no sound, no sonic boom, nothing. Um, they had a cutaway illustration, pretty much like the one I'll show you in a little bit, that showed what the internal components of this vehicle were. And they had some of the panels taken off so you could actually look in and see oxygen tanks and a little robotic arm that could extend out from the side of the vehicle for collecting samples and things. So obviously, this is a vehicle that not only is capable of flying around through the atmosphere, but it's also capable of going out to space and collecting samples. And it's using a type of propulsion system that doesn't make any noise. As far as he could see, had no moving parts um, and didn't have any exhaust gases or fuel to be expended. It was just there, hovering. Well, the synthetic vision system that's on the AR, what they called the Alien Reproduction Vehicle, it was also nicknamed the Flux Liner. Uh, this is this, this anti-gravity propulsion system, this, this flying saucer, one of three that were in this hangar at Norton Air Force Base. This synthetic vision system uses the same kind of technology as the, the gun slaving system that they have in the Apache helicopter, except in this case you have two cameras and it picks any pair of the cameras in that pattern of six that are around the circumference, including the one on the top, whichever pair most closely matches the orientation of the pilot's head. This shows the cutaway. You can see the uh, the uh, four ejection seats. Actually, there there are two facing us, but there are also two that are sort of facing away from us on the other side of that central column. You can see the uh, the oxygen tanks down here in the corner uh, that that actually go all the way around the inside of the skirt. Uh, there's also another set of oxygen tanks that are inside the uh, the crew compartment sphere. Brad said a couple things about this system. Now, I should also describe, he said there were three vehicles. The first one, the smallest one, the one was partially taken apart, the one that was shown in the video that was running in this hangar, November 12, 1988 at Norton Air Force Base, was about 24 feet in diameter at its widest part, right at the base of that flange. The next biggest one, was 60 feet in diameter at the base. Oh, by the way, and the largest of three vehicles was about 120 to 130 feet in diameter. I mean, that's, that's massive when you think about it. It's just huge. Brad said that in this exhibit at Norton Air Force Base that a three-star general said that these vehicles were capable of doing light speed or better.